I think anyone who has watched the 2024 Dallas Cowboys play this season would agree that this is not a good football team. They're three and four. They don't really have anything going for them as of now. You know who doesn't agree with that though? Uh, Stephen Jones. Now that makes sense. He is the de facto general manager of the team, right? I know Jerry holds the title, but we know Stephen Jones is very involved with the team building side of things. Not exactly with the draft where Will McClay runs things, but with the free agency side of things and all that and the contracts, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Stephen Jones does not appear to have an issue with the way that the team is built. And I wanted to talk about that because that just quite simply needs to change before the trade deadline for better or or worse this team needs to start accepting that they do not have a well-built roster is how i would describe it now let me show you what i'm talking about stephen jones talked to 105 105.3 the fan on monday it was and they asked him if he had had any thoughts about the cowboys roster simply not being that good and the cowboys basically just finding that out at some point this season, right? Uh, this was Stephen Jones's uh, response, and I'll show you from the article that I did for adzsports.com slash Dallas, detail detailing what we're about to discuss. Uh, this team, said Stephen Jones, is made up of a lot of the same players that won 12 games the last three seasons. Right now, we're just going through adversity. We've had more than our share of injuries, it feels like, this year, especially on the defensive side of the ball. So basically, we're not that bad. It's just that we've been injured. But we're we're not that bad. We, we have the same players that we had in 23 when we won 12 games, in 22 when we won 12 games, in 2021 when we also won 12 games. So how about we stop questioning the roster? Because... If we're this bad now, why? If we were that bad, why would we still have the same players? That that's kind of the point that Stephen Jones is trying to make here. I'm here to tell you today, he is straight up lying to Cowboys fans, and I don't say that lightly. You cannot look at this year's team and be like, the thing is, we've had some injuries right because you have not had injuries at other key positions you had you have had some injuries at defense event you have had some issues over at corner with dayron bland but but let's talk about it the team is not good enough and let's talk about some players that were here for the 2023 season that are not anymore and how it has impact the team and I'll start with the cornerback position since Stephen Jones wants to talk about the injuries on the defensive side of the ball. Let's talk about Stephon Gilmore. It's not on the team. And you, I know a lot of you are going to be like, Mo, man, we've been talking about that since March. Can you just please let it go? I can let it go. But the problem is if we're trying to find answers as to why this team is three and four and not playing well, you got to start with the fact we talked about the quarterback yesterday. If you want to go... Attack the quarterback, that's fine. You can go watch yesterday's video. We talked about that in depth. But the reality is you got to look at what you built. You got to look at what the team... This is the team, right? This is the team. Lost the fun, lost uh, Deron Bland before the season started. He did not have any quarterback depth beyond a fifth-round rookie. That was the Cowboys' choice for number four cornerback. Last year, it was Jordan Lewis. That's pretty good depth, right? Last year... The idea was to run out Trevon Dix, Stephon Gilmore, and they run Bland in the nickel. That was a luxury for Dallas. And if one of them got injured, you could push anybody outside and then just have Jordan Lewis take over at nickel. That was solid depth. The Cowboys version of it in 2024 was Kalen Carson. Now, back in week one, we were excited about Carson. A lot of fans were like, hey, man. This front office knew what it was doing all along. Carson is great. Turns out playing a late round rookie is a problem. But then let's 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 give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's pretend that okay, they really liked Carson. I don't think that has anything to do with the Gilmore decision because I think the Cowboys knew they were never going to pay Stephon Gilmore what he was paid even though they could have made it work 
in the salary cap space because he is taking up less than Trey Lance does for Dallas in Minnesota, right? So he's he has like a four million cap hit, which the Cowboys could have done easily. Easily they could have made the math work. They didn't want to gamble like that. They said, you know what? We'll do killing Carson. Then Kellen Carson went down injured, right? So let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Kellen Carson went down injured, and even then, they have not signed anybody since then. Now, Kellen Carson has missed what? Has, hasn't he missed one, two, three, four games since he went down? Those four games, the Cowboys have consciously made the decision that, hey, we're fine, we're not signing anybody. Stephen Jones thinks it's not a roster issue. Stephen Jones thinks that he lost Bland, he lost Kalen Carson, and not adjusting to that at all is not a roster issue, right? They, it's just bad luck. Never mind that that injury happened four weeks, a, a month ago. Never mind any of that. It's not a roster issue. It's just that it's bad luck. That is frustrating. And we can talk about the quarterback, we can talk about the play calling, we can talk about the head coach. All of those are problems, all right? I'm not saying otherwise. But I'm telling you, this is the team that they're putting together and continue to put together. Because one thing is the free agency decisions made in March. Another different thing is what they're doing right now. Where you can lose, you can, you can be down multiple cornerbacks and not do anything about it for a month. Which is what has happened. Now, Stephen Jones says it's the same players as last year. Cornerback was very different. The Cowboys capitalized on the depth, on the luxury of depth that they had at cornerback in 2023. Forgot about it one year later. And they said, we don't need depth. We, we can get it done with a fifth round rookie as cornerback four. And if he goes down, we can make it with our practice squad guy. It's going to be fine. That's, that's the reality. Now, Another name on the list for me is obviously the biggest one, I would argue, Tyron Smith. Tyron Smith has not been great for New York, but do you know who he has been better than? Tyler Guyton. Now, I'm not knocking Guyton, right? He's a first-round rookie, high upside. We always knew about the low floor. But that was a decision from Dallas. Now, it is a decision that has been costing the Cowboys greatly because you don't have a running game. You don't really have a very good defense. Your only hope would potentially be that you have a quarterback that was just a second-team All-Pro and a wide receiver that was first-team All-Pro and involved in the Offensive Player of the Year voting. Now, the problem is you cannot trust the protection. That is an issue on both sides of the ball, left side and right side, or the offensive line, rather. If you had Tyron Smith at left tackle, and I know he's regressed. I know he hasn't been great for New York. But if you could ask him to play one-on-one -on, -one on the left side and help out Terrence Steele, protection would be much better than it is right now. But it's not only that. It's a snowball effect, right? Because right now, you need to help out Terrence Steele. You also need to help out Tyler Guyton. can only help one of them out. And when you add those looks that the Cowboys like to do where they get a tight end and a running back on empty backfields, and they try to chip the defense events. Those are routes that are not happening in the passing play. Or if they are, it's just like this check down route, running to the flat or just staying there in open space. But that's a route less that you're giving your QB. And that impacts you when, you're, when on third and four, I think it was, you've got the quarterback sprinting out to his left side, the second interception from Dak Prescott, he forced the ball, but this was the play. Sprinting out to the left side, he's got to tr throw across his body. There's only two routes, and if those two are not open, on third down, your best option is to throw it away. Now, Dak should have done that. I'm not justifying Dak's interception here. But he, I, I'm just trying to illustrate how one decision, letting Tyron's mid walk, has impacted you, seriously impacted you, and cost you games in 2024 already. So again, we can talk about how many of these guys are the same, but it's wild that Stephen Jones does not want to admit that those players who are not here, not even talking about outside free agent additions, which should have happened as well, the in-house decisions are costing you greatly. Uh, another name on my list, I've got Jonathan Hankins. I'm not even going to dive deep into that one. You already know what I'm talking about. Massey Smith is one of the worst defensive tackles 
at especially nose tackles in the entire league right now. And yes, to the Cowboys' defense, they were hoping for him to be better. But haven't we, or didn't we, talk about this since February, January, that one of the guys they had to re-sign was Jonathan Hankins because, one, he wasn't going to be that expensive. Case in point, he occupies under $2 million for the Seattle Seahawks in cap space. And you just didn't know about Amasi because it was going to be his second year, but it was really going to be his first year playing nose tackle because as a rookie, he didn't keep his weight up. So you really didn't know how he was going to look like at the position that you were going to play him in in 2024. The Cowboys, though, decided not to pay Jonathan Hankins. And I know some of you will be like, okay, Mo, Mo, that is actually not the case because uh, Jonathan Hankins preferred to go to the Seahawks. He was offered by the Cowboys, but he preferred to go to the Seahawks. The guy takes up under $2 million in cap space for the Seahawks. I'm guessing you could have made it work with money, right? You could have been like, okay, Hankins, I'll give you a little bit more, right? I'll, what is the number they're offering you? I'll make sure to keep you because I need that insurance policy. I need you to play here. I need. I, you heard his podcast. You heard Jonathan Hankins on his YouTube channel. He was expecting to come back to Dallas. The Cowboys refused to get that done. Again, what has been one of the biggest issues in Dallas? Stephen Jones says it's the same roster. It's not. It is not because you don't have that nose tackle. You have a guy that is one of the worst in the league. And I could be like, bench him, but I don't know who they would play. It's a roster issue. That is a roster issue. As simple as that. Could dive deeper into other names. And I've got two honorable mentions that I'll get to. But before we do that, Let's talk about the Cowboys' version of the all-in, right? This is their version of the all-in. But you know where you should be going all-in? Seriously going all-in? Over at Texas Card House, where you can join the premier experience. Playing poker, man, with a great community, but also with that excitement of the game that makes Texas Card House so special. Check out that community. That is important, man. When you're playing poker, you got to have the right community. Visit any of Texas Card House's six Texas locations highlighting the Dallas venue and Las Colinas venue. Texas Card House offers a unique blend of luxury, sophistication, and camaraderie for poker aficionados. Whether you are a seasoned pro or maybe you're just starting out, you're learning what a flush is, you're learning what a straight flush is, Join a welcoming community at a top-notch facility located near you. They've got $2 Tuesdays where you can go get yourself some $2 draft beer. And if you cannot make it on Tuesday, today by the way, you can check out the Low Bowl Happy Hour every single day from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. If you like poker like me, got to go check out Texas Card House in any of their six Texas locations. Make, make sure you do that. Uh, shout out to them. Those guys really go all in, unlike Jerry Jones, man. Uh, but again, let's get into the two honorable mentions. Tony Pollard. I'm not saying the Cowboys should have paid Tony Pollard, but he cannot run. He cannot run the ball. You've got Seek, you've got Dalvin Cook, even with Rico. I know we want to see more of Rico Dowdle. I know Cowboys fans are complaining about the Rico Dowdle illness thing. I myself would complain about that too. I think it was a little bit fishy. But that's a conversation for another day. But, man, Pollard maybe could have made a difference on this team. I know it's tricky with the contract stuff. But I'm just saying, man, just just telling fans that, he, that this is the same team. The problem is either they really believe that and they're not going to do anything at the trade deadline, buyers or sellers-wise, to rebuild for next year. Or, or they just make this stuff up to wash their hands on, on on the radio, right? Another couple of honorable mentions, Dur uh, Durant Armstrong and Dan Fowler Jr. Now, I'm not saying those two guys would make the biggest difference on this team, but you're talking about defensive injuries, talking about depth in indirectly, and you could have used one of those two guys at least because, man, this, these guys are not getting home uh, after losing Lawrence and Neyland and Micah. Now, I do give them the benefit of the doubt at that position because that's so many injuries, including Sam Williams, who, by the way, uh, 
I don't understand the suspension used for Sam Williams. How could you suspend somebody? Uh, topic for another day. But Sam Williams also hurt himself. So I, I'll give them that one. I'll be like, okay, you had a strong defensive end group to start the year. You just happened to be hit with injuries. But then again, then again, how much did those guys cost? Because you could have kept one of them easily. Could have done that. Pass rush has been inexistent with the Cowboys' injuries. But anyways, man, I just wanted to get here, bent a little bit, because I think, I think we're getting at a desperate point in the season where it's now or never, and the trade deadline is coming up. It's next Tuesday, so a week from now, and it doesn't seem like the Cowboys are going to do a lot. And that starts with the idea that your de facto GM is telling the media, we don't have a roster problem, man. We, we've just been banged up. We've just been banged up. That is the real problem here. Man, that's just not great. That is not a way to win. That, that is no way to win in the NFL. Shout out to the Chiefs, the only undefeated team. They've pulled off two trades. They've gotten Joshua Ushi, edge rusher, who the Cowboys should have targeted. Absolutely. They got D-Hop to give Patrick Mahomes a wide receiver. You got the Bills trading for Deontay Johnson, wide receiver. You know what those guys gave up? It's a late round swap. They are swapping fifth rounders and sixth rounders. That's what it took to get Deontay Johnson. The Cowboys are telling you they don't have a roster problem, though. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, hope that you enjoyed the show. Even if it's a frustrating topic, hit the like button for me if you enjoyed the content, if you feel like it was good content, and I'll see you again very soon. No show on Wednesday, but I'll be back in the studio on Thursday. Bye-bye.